the statue of Koya Shaoki. Mark? Steven! Mark! Hi! <laughs> what? Okay, so Moon Knight Episode 4 probably has one of the most head scratching endings in a TV show since before Lost lost its audience with its stupid final season. Yes, I'm still bitter. What you doing? What the, what the hell are you doing? Anyway, there's lots of things that could be happening with this, and the Heavy Spoilers team have been talking every week about where we think things are going. A huge shout out to our editor Matt for coming up with the theory that the entire show is actually a show within a show, and though I initially fired him at first, I think the guy might be right. Every week there's been more and more evidence towards it, and throughout this video we're going to be breaking it all down with some of our other theories about what's really happening. So sit back, hold on to your butts, because sh** is about to get weird. Please hit the thumbs up button if you enjoy the breakdown, and also don't forget to subscribe for videos like this every day. Without the way, welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, now let's make it even Stevens and get into the breakdown. Okay, so before we go over the evidence, I feel like we have to discuss how this actually pulls from the comics and what they're doing in Episode 4. Jeff Lemire's run is pretty much the entire basis for the twist in the entry, and in it Mark finds himself inside an asylum run by a character called Dr. Emmett. Revealed to actually be Omit, she uses jackals disguised as orderlies to try and convince Mark that all his memories of being Moon Knight are fake and that he's actually just imagined the entire thing due to his psychosis. Eventually Mark breaks out the illusion and he discovers that he's really trapped inside another dimension known as the Other Void which exists outside of time and space. Mark and the rest of his personalities battle their way out of this with us getting the story told to us from different perspectives. Firstly is Mark who sees himself being chased by mummies, much like what we got in episode 4. There's also Jake Lockley who believes he's being framed for murder, and Moon Knight who thinks he's a space pilot. As Steven believes that he's actually a TV show producer working on Moon Knight, and all of his sections are told to us with him believing he's on set shooting the show. So there's definitely precedent in the comics to have all this just be part of one big TV show, and once you see the evidence, you might see how stuff actually goes beyond this. Now the first thing I want to talk about is the green screen in episode 3. As many of you know, most of us breakdown punks got sent the first 4 episodes early, but we were told the elements of them were unfinished. When we finally got around to watching episode 3 last week, I just assumed that the bright green cloth that was seen during one of the fight scenes was something that they hadn't tidied up yet and didn't bother to mention it in our breakdown script. However, when the episode released it stayed behind and it's weird seeing a cloth this colour because I don't think I've ever seen one like this that you can buy as it's pretty vomit inducing. This green shade is used in green screen because it's rare that someone would ever wear clothing that's this shade. So seeing it on a cloth is a bit weird and if you've been paying attention to Twitter, you might have also seen there was a cameraman spotted in a shot during the chase scene. These two things are pretty glaring when you're playing at this theory and after re-watching episode 2, there's a massive moment that stood out in it. When Steven is fired from his job at the museum, the HR guy sits behind a table that looks exactly like the one that Harrow has in episode 4. He also passes him a leaflet for help, and though the face on it is extremely blurred, it's almost a double for how Harrow appears in that episode. Shortly after this Steven talks about the NHS and he also pays lip service to having been in one of these hospitals before, much like what we see in episode 4. Now the only way for this to all work is if there's some truth to what's happening in 4 and potentially either the fourth wall will break and Steven will reveal he's a show producer slash actor much like the comics or he'll be in an institution. Now I received a really observant email from someone today who said they'd spent several years as an in and out patient at mental health facilities. They said they felt uncomfortable sharing this on social media so I don't want to use the person's name but I'll add it as a pinned comment if they get back to me and say it's okay. They noticed several things in the series that also pop up in the hospital that we didn't really pick up in our initial breakdown. The first being that when Steven leaves his flat he runs into a man with a cart full of brooms and a pushcart like this is almost a constant in a hospital setting. They also brought up the orderlies Bobby and Billy who appear in the hospital and also the comics. When they took him to Harrow they unlocked his handcuffs and Harrow says he just wanted to better understand the situation. This entire scene is the same way that a patient would be introduced to their new home in a hospital by their psychiatrist. This includes people sitting in the background discussing things on meditation pillows and also the area with everyone watching calming nature films. A common practice is to give a patient food from the same line as the others to show it's a safe space which is something that also happens. Now the entire fourth episode could be an allegory to Mark working with Layla to get into parts of the hospital that he shouldn't be in. With Harrow's words of not being able to help someone that can't help themselves, it feels like he's riffing on common practices used by hospitals. The death scene itself could also be a metaphor for being sedated, and yet it all seems like that's the kind of thing they're doing. 
I'm not sure whether we will completely go that way, but it's definitely worth talking about, and I kind of feel like more evidence will pop up as we go back through the episodes and rewatch them. Now, there's also the third personality, Jake Lockley, who has been teased at a lot in the last four episodes. The latest one ends with Mark and Steven being reunited, and it seems like Jake is locked away at this point, but no doubt he'll come bounding out as they rely on more personalities to help them get out of there. That's really where I can see things going next time, and Jake seems to be far more brutal than the other two. With them both denying killing those kids in episode 3, it only leaves him as the guilty party, and we have had other hints towards him. I've already done the accent thing like three times yet, but I'll replay the clip in case you didn't watch those videos, just so you can hear how it slightly differs from Mark's. I'm looking for Sen food, sarcophagus. Hey, look, what the hell are you doing here? You shouldn't what? be here. What? So what, this Joker just puts on normal mock games in his backyard for fun? I'm looking for Sen food, sarcophagus. Hey, look, what the hell are you doing here? You shouldn't what? be here. What? So what, this Joker just puts on normal mock games in his backyard for fun? Now, there was also the taxi which Jake drives and the date from episode 1. Mark is of course married to Layla and he was trying to keep a low profile, so I can't see him organising a night out with a woman at a steakhouse if he was still trying to keep things secret. Someone other than Steven and Mark organised this and therefore I think that is probably Jake who did it rather than them. So yeah, expect a big Jake reveal pretty soon I think and I can imagine that the next episode will be pretty flashback heavy as we delve into Mark's psyche and learn about his past. His parents have already been cast and with them being quite young actors, it seems the way they'll be going is exploring what made him him, and him, and possibly him. Trailers have shown the fateful time that he became Conchu's avatar and yeah, I can see that being what we do next before we ramp up for a big finale the week after that. Now this will also allow them to introduce Raoul Bushman who has been hinted at in the series. In case you don't know, he's the guy who Mark went to the dig site with in which they unearthed the temple of Conchu. Realising he could get rich, Bushman killed everyone there and then he beat Mark within an inch of his life. Mark was then taken before the Shrine of Conchu and he agreed to become his avatar on Earth in exchange for being brought back to life. Mark then went after him and though he hasn't been named specifically, I do think it will be revealed that Bushman was behind Layla's dad's death. Now, there are also a number of theories saying that they think that Jake might actually be the assassin and that he could be the one who killed her dad. It is a pretty good theory that would put Mark in an awkward position and from the hints we've had of Jake so far, he doesn't really mind killing people. However, I'm still kind of tied to the source material and I think that they'll probably still go with Bushman. Now where we could go with Layla is a complete unknown, but it does seem like they might be teasing that she's the Scarlet Scarab. In the comics, this was a character known as Abdul Fowl who dressed up as a pharaoh and led a group known as the Sons of the Scarab. Layla's father nicknamed her his Little Scarab and her full name also sounds a lot like Abdul. In episode 3, we learned it was Layla Abdullah Al Fowley, which does sound quite similar to Abdul Fowl. In episode 4, when we cut to her in the asylum, she also gets up close to Mark, and you can actually make out a red scarab marking on a thimble that she has on her finger. This definitely makes me think they're teasing that she's going to get her own powers and costume, and the MCU is very much leaning into women becoming soups alongside the men. Layla is one of my favourite characters, so I'd love to see it, and with her not being based on anyone from the comics, they could definitely do it and give us a big surprise. Now the episode culminated with Tarawet coming onto the scene and it looks like she's either trapped down there too or able to access it. Potentially she was a god that oversaw Alexander's tomb or like Conchu, she became trapped in the statue and has been banished to wherever this is. Now her showing up is clearly going to be important for how they escape and I kind of feel like she might either make Mark or Steven her avatar. Going beyond that she could make Layla become one and this could allow her to become the Scarlet Scarab that we've been theorising about. As for B-22, it's still not exactly clear what this number was included for, and the only things we've been able to link it to is the fact that 22 isn't on the bingo card, and Moon Knight Volume 22 in which Mark, Steven and Jake all made big appearances as different personalities. Now our editor Matt went through the numbers on the card and added them all up, and if you take B-22, G-15, O-7, B-7, N-39 and I-2, it all adds up to 174. The Marvel Legacy numbering start at issue 188 and if you subtract the issues to find what should be 174, you end up with Jeff Lemire issue 1, which is what this entire thing is based on. It's a pretty deep cut easter egg and beyond that, all the numbers that Crawley calls out aren't typical on a US card for bingo. Yet somehow, Mark still wins. Kinda makes me think that with the numbers all being missing that the entire scenario is a lie and something to show that the rules of this place aren't based on reality. This is why the corridor shifts later on and why we also get the other personalities trapped there. I kind of feel like there might be a hidden meaning behind it, but right now we don't really know, however things might become clear when we discover Mark's past. 
Potentially, this is linked to his mother, who died when he was very young in the comics. Though Stephen Grant has spent time on the phone to his, if she actually existed, she'd surely know that his voice had changed quite a lot. Layla also asked about his mother in episode 2, but this could potentially just be a lie that Mark fed her in order to hide the truth from her. I definitely think there's more than meets the eye with her that we will likely explore as we get further into the series. We have just two episodes left, and what I love about the show is that no one can say for definite exactly where it's going. So in conclusion, the whole thing might be doing crap CGI and bad sets on purpose because it's actually a TV show. We're probably going to be seeing Jake Lockley sooner rather than later, and Layla might end up becoming a character from the comics that will mean she can do her own things going forward. Lots of things to discuss, and I don't know if I'm wrong or if I'm right, but I just had to give my initial theories after watching the whole thing play out. It's going to be a long wait for episode 5, but in the meantime I'd love to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments below. You probably have better ones than me, so make sure you drop them and call it before we get to next week's entry. Now we are in a competition right now and giving away 3 more copies of Spider-Man No Way Home on the 15th of May, and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the episode. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the winners of the last one are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of episode 4, in which we go into way more detail. That'll be linked on screen right now, so head over there, or, or else. I don't know what I'm going to do, but please, please do. I, I need the views. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.